Hello, my friends. It's me, Karen Valentine, and um, we are going to try something new today. So um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, I hope you enjoy what you find here. And if you are an old friend, thank you for coming back and hanging out with me once again. So in my, um, my artistic journey of, um, of in, in, in the art world, <laughs> um, I have been um, on this path to try and find um, the right kind of substrate for me to work on that I am in love with. Um, one of those things that I discovered was pastel mat, um, which I showed you guys in the video that I did when I did the dog. But this is another very, very interesting, um, I, I'm not going to, paper, um, and that word is, loose, is used loosely because it is not paper. It is a polyester drawing film um, that um, architects um, have been using for years and artists have now been discovering it as something really, really cool. So it is translucent and it is smooth. <laughs> it's like glass. It's like rubbing your hand over. It is so smooth. You would not think that colored pencils would stick to it, but colored pencils stick to it amazingly. Now, you are not going to get, um, it, it's a different uh, process that you use than you would with a regular piece of paper, slightly different process, um, or definitely that you would use on anything with a lot of tooth, in that it does not take a ton of layers, but you don't need a ton of layers on it, which is really, really cool. So, I was trying to figure out how to do, um, how to incorporate it um, for you guys into using on a, um, a, a color, in coloring books. Because you can get this, um, you can get this pack of um, 25 sheets on Amazon fairly inexpensively. It's, um, it's more of a, um, it's the it's the lower end of the drafting film um, that you can get. Um, the one that I have been using for my um, artwork is also by Graphics, but it's it's like a couple of grades up. And when I say that, I don't mean that this is bad. It's just that the um, the 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 graphics um, double mat. 0 0.005 film is actually um, a little bit toothier. You can definitely feel a difference, um, but it's still quite smooth. But for as far as for like coloring pages and things like that, this, this will be awesome. So the thing that's cool about it is that, you know, you can just lay it on top of your coloring page and use the artwork that's underneath as your guide and then create your artwork and you can back it with a piece of white paper when you're finished and you've created something really really cool so i thought that we would give this a go this is um only my second time <laughs> using it um i did the um the jack russell terrier on drafting film um, and i did post that on my instagram page if you want to go take a look at that um and it was but it's amazing to use. So I thought that we would give that a go and do this page. So um, I'm trying to figure out right now as I'm looking at this how I'm going to attach this so that it stays put where I want it to but still allows me to lift it. Um, let me figure that out and um, when I do I will be right back. Okay, so I just um, used some blue tape on the top and taped it to the page so that I can lift it 
um, and place a piece of plain white paper or even tan paper underneath to, um, to see how I'm progressing. So, um, let us, let's zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna work on the face first and I think I'm going to work on the eyes first. So, yeah, let's, um, let's do this. <laughs> um, the other thing that this paper is really, really cool for is being able to use the slice tool. So we will use that um, as well. So I think I'm going to start on the eyes. And I have no idea <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it and see what happens. All right, I'm not sure how bright. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of bright. So the thing about this film is that it um, the pens the pencil just just grabs like. You can put the lightest of pressure on here and the pencil just glides over the paper. So you can get these really beautiful details. Uh, let's see, let's try this one. Uh, really, really beautiful details without working very hard uh, because they just really Go on there very easily. So I think I'm going to put the black in on the eyes. And this page, oh, I guess I should mention who this coloring book is by. Duh. Um, so this is um, Carolina Kubikowska. And it is Imaginary Dreams. And I love her artwork. But after, um, after doing some of her pages for a while, I realized that I personally, on some of them, especially the portraits, um, for me as a colorist, didn't like the um, scratchy uh, artist uh, brush strokes on certain things. Like I love it on the flowers and um, and and even on the cat. Um, so I haven't done any of her pages in a while, which is kind of a shame because they're they they really are very very beautiful and. I kind of feel like I want to get back to doing some of her pages again. Um, but um, the cool thing about this drafting film is that you can, you can create, um, you have complete creative control, which is really a cool, cool thing. So I am barely touching the surface of this paper and um, my pencil is just is just hitting it just fine I mean it's just it's coming on beautifully without me hardly even touching it at all which I really love Some more colors into those pupils, but I just wanted to kind of get the the darkness going around the eye. Okay, let's see. What do we want to use? Indian red. No, I think that's too dark. Although I do kind of want it to be dark, or I've got my Caput Mortem. Let's just see what Caput Mortem does. Michael. 
close enough in for you guys. I can probably even come in even a little bit closer since we're really focusing here. I mean, I'm, I'm literally just, my pencil is just gliding over the top of this. It's, um, it's really cool. So I'm really curious to see how a coloring page will look. Um, you know, when, when there's no lines, <laughs> at the end, because we're going to, um, we have to create everything. Okay, I think I want some darker here. What color is this? Olive green, yellowish. Is that as dark as I want? Maybe. I put the highlight in here. There was no highlight underneath. Um, so I put it in here. But you could always pull it out with, um, with a slice tool as well. All right, let's see what have I got here. Some coral or cinnamon. I should have a little scrap of this paper somewhere to test colors. Let's try cinnamon. Um. So this is another example of something that might be an excellent paper for anybody who's got um, hand issues because you, you do not have to press hard on this at all. All right, so now I'm just curious to see what happens. So you can see that when we add the, the paper underneath, now you can see what you've done so far and I can look at that and see oh well I've got like some missing areas here that I didn't fill in that I want to make sure that I do because we have to remember that those lines that um, the artist put in for you are not going to be there when you're all finished although I suppose you could just cut it to fit and leave it in the book and let it just um, sit on top. That could be kind of cool too. Okay, let's do the nose. So I might try in doing the nose and see if we can, if I can show you another cool technique. Somewhere in here is my Combo eraser. So you can erase on this drafting film <laughs> to almost to the to the point of it just completely disappearing. So you use your Tombow eraser um, to do to do highlights, which is another really awesome aspect of this paper. Alrighty, let's try and do this nose. It's tiny. So I'm not sure how much detail I'll be able to get in here, um, but that's okay. I like the way the eyes turned out. Uh, let's see, let's try the cap 
boot mortem instead of black for teensy little bit of black right down the center. Okay, so mm, it's, it's such a tiny detail. Maybe that's not a good detail to show you how I use the tool. So maybe we just start working on the fur a little bit. Um, got here. Burnt ochre, sanguine. I'm thinking for the top of the nose, probably burnt ochre, terracotta, and cream. Maybe we'll start there and see what we get. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of cream on here. Just, it doesn't really show up very well. And let's do some burnt ochre. This is going to be, I'm really curious to find out if this is going to work, if this is going to be a good experiment or not. All right, I want to go a little bit more, a little bit lighter right in here. And you probably, it's not really showing up very well, which I think is still okay. We're going to. Just keep going and see what we get here. So normally, if I were to be doing this, um, I would be using something with a little, you know, like something more like line art. Um, I think so this has a lot of um, detail, a lot of um, um, detail marks, so uh, so the, the art that you know that Carolina put on the page so I'm trying not to get confused with what I'm you know with all of that um, the other option would be for me to take my um, my pencil and I actually I could use colored pencil for this I'm wondering if that would be a better plan um, I could take my color pencil and just come in here where maybe we do that. I can't decide. Um. <laughs> okay, so if you were doing a, a different page, if you were not doing this one, um, I would say that you could come in with the color pencils that you think you're going to be using for the page and just very lightly do your outline um, around the image. And then um, you're basically gonna be creating your line art in um, for the coloring book or coloring page and then you can go ahead and work um, in whatever way you want to um, without having the distraction of the lines. Um, in this case I think I might just go ahead and try and do it right here on top of the book and we'll see how that goes. So 
Um, yeah. Since that's where we're at, we'll just keep kind of working here. So I know you can't see this cream very well because it's it's so light. Um, but that's okay. The thing um, that's just that's just really cool is that it takes no pressure at all to um, to get the pencil down on the film. In fact, I think what I might do is just go real lightly with short little strokes because our kitties, you know, do have short little strokes, and just fill in this whole head area. And then we'll come in with the other colors and our eraser to do highlights. Let's try that. It's fun to find new products new things to work on and there are some artists who do the most incredible work on this drafting film there's actually a whole um, Facebook group um, just dedicated to artwork on drafting film and um, whew, it's just so inspiring so beautiful the stuff that those artists create Okay, I'm not gonna put any in there. We'll save that for something else. Some different colors. Okay, I know I said I was gonna work in short little strokes and I'm not doing that, so I'm, I think I'm being naughty, but it seems to be working out okay. <laughs> better to work in short strokes. Now I did um, discover um, through both uh, listening to artists um, talk and um, discovering it for myself that the drafting film is not the best thing, although I've, I've seen some artists do it, but it's not the easiest thing. That's what I should probably say to use um, for portraits because it's actually kind of hard to get a really super smooth um, blended because you don't really you don't really blend on this paper um, not like you do with regular paper it's, um, you layer, but it's not like you can smush your colors together like um, we do when we do our, our portraits where we're just smushing and blending all of those colors together. So maybe one day I'll be good enough to the point where I can do that, but right now, um, no. <laughs> It's not terrible, but it's it's definitely harder to achieve the look that um, I wanted. So, all right. Um, let's see. What do I want to do? We'll start there. We'll, we'll we'll go with that. Okay. So, how about? Hmm. Let's see how dark this Indian red is. Barest of pressure, just yeah. I think we'll go with this Indian red. Let's see. Do I want to put any?
<laughs> I'm still just blown away by how easy it is to get color onto this super slick surface. It's just such a cool thing. There's, <clears throat> there's an artist on um, here on YouTube, but also on Patreon. And I might have mentioned her before. Her name is Bonnie Snowden. <clears throat> and she does the most incredible work on drafting film. Um, in fact, it was her page that I first kind of learned about it. And um, it's just mesmerizing to, to watch her create a piece. But she's got a um, tutorial on her Patreon for doing this tiger, this gorgeous, gorgeous Bengal tiger on drafting film. I think that's going to be my next project to try and attempt. Um, usually what I do is um, I watch the tutorials all the way through. I'll just sit on my, um, on my iPad at night in front of the TV while hubby's watching something, whatever he feels like watching. Um, and I will watch um, the YouTube buys YouTube tutorials. So I'll watch them all the way through, and then um, and then I'll sit down and just and just try and do it. I just absorb as much as I can from the from her tutorials first, because I personally have a hard time um, following a tutorial step by step because I always seem to want to go off in a different direction or um, you know I, I might work at a different pace or whatever so it works really well for me to watch learn techniques learn you know pick up wit words of wisdom um, as far as what to do what not to do and then just kind of go for it So I do not think that with as little and light of layers as I am putting down on this, if I had done this straight onto the paper, I just do not think that I would be getting um, as much color and richness as I feel like I'm getting right now on this drafting film. I want to get a little bit more variation of color. We don't have quite enough um, color, you know, yeah, that. <laughs> so I can't remember. I think I, what did I use on her? Terracotta? Yeah, so let's do a little bit of um, burnt ochre. Let's get some different colors going here. And I also do want to show you how cool this, maybe I'll start putting some of this color on here and then we'll use the, the uh, slice tool to show you how to get, although lots of you probably are familiar with the slice tool by now, but it, um, on this paper, it works really, really nicely. So, I know, I, f I feel like um, my brain is telling me that I should be doing little flicky motions, but for some reason I'm feeling the <laughs> desire to just fill in with little circles. I don't know why, but I am, so that's what I'm going to do.
So you will be surprised at how many layers you'll, you will be able to get on this drafting film. Um, you know, it's not gonna be like 20 layers like you would get on a, on a nice toothy paper, but you're definitely gonna get enough to keep on adding layers and enriching your color. I'm kind of curious what it's looking like so far underneath the thing. I know I don't have anything on the mouth, so let's let's put some color under there. I don't know if that's the right color though. Let's try um, Capo Mortem. use the slice tool I think for um, getting the white in here so um, I need to have a base color down I'm not sure what the right base color is yet I don't know if I should do a gray So I want to add some more color underneath. All right, just for giggles. I know it's not ready yet and does and isn't going to look cool, but let's just slide this under and see what we've got going on here. Oh, yeah, see, I missed, I missed a whole section there. Oh, yeah, it's the flowers. Okay, <laughs> good. All right. So um, the black underneath is going to give things more depth. So you definitely, need. I think, need to make sure that you add the depth um, or else you're it's gonna look kind of flat although honestly you could you could do all of your coloring um, and then get your depth by adding it on the back of the film the film is workable on both sides so if you wanted to add some more darkness, you could do it on the back. Okay. Um, let's... All right, before I go down there, I think we'll work up in here a little bit. Let's just, let's get some color going up in here. So this is um, cinnamon. This actually would be a good one to show you how the slice tool works for, for hair. Yeah, it would, that would be good. Okay, so we're gonna fill all this in. Now, in order for the slice tool to work right, you need to, you know, have s plenty of pigment down on the paper. Um, you don't want to do one teeny thin, tiny little layer and then nothing else. So, I'm going to add some more color in here. I'm going to add some more color down in here.
enough? Probably. Um, and is it dark enough? I might just add a teeny little bit of black. Just give it the lightest touch. You barely have to, again, touch the paper for the color to come. Slice tool for hair. Just like, just like that. Uh, let's see. Do this. It's a little awkward of an angle, but. You don't want to push too hard. Actually, my blade might need replacing. Because um, you don't want to gouge the paper. Okay. So you can see the little hair. Oh, gosh darn it. You can see the little hair marks there. All right, so I want to get some more darker colors not too dark but just a little bit more of an outline around here So we need a color on the face that we're going to then remove. Um, but you still have to have that base color down. And I'm not sure what color I want to use for that. Um, if I want to do a gray. Um, I don't know. Okay, let's start with. burnt ochre. I want to get some of that down here. Terracotta. No, I think it needs to be like a gray. I think it needs to be a warm gray. And it's going to look weird, but I think that's what we need. So warm gray, either three or four. Let's try three. I know it's gonna look really weird, but it is going to be our shadows. <laughs> it looks funny. Okay, um, let's try the slice tool for this. I do, I think I need a new blade. Not good since I don't have one. Or maybe I don't have enough. Come on now. Do I not have enough color down there? Maybe. It could that that very well could be the reason. Alright, so we'll put a little bit more color down.
Come on now, don't let me down. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put my white paper underneath so I can see what I'm doing. I think I was just worried about um, scratching the paper too much. So by putting the um, darker color underneath, when I scratch away to the white, we have little, we have the shadow that would be, um, you know, between the hairs. Time for me to get a new blade. Should probably use a brush for that. So I wasn't thinking very clearly as I was doing this and realized that I had kind of made those scratch marks a little bit too long um, in that I don't want it to look like these are the whiskers. I want this to be the little tiny short hairs that are on the cat. So doing a little bit shorter strokes and um, kind of going in some different directions here. But now that I'm looking at this with the um, without the stuff underneath, you can definitely see where I um, got lazy <laughs> and um, did circle strokes instead of The little sh the little marks that you shouldn't do like that they're that they're hairs it makes a difference it really does but I am finding it easier um, to not have all those lines underneath to be able to see. And it's interesting because I'm discovering that um, what looked to be nice and rich brown when I had the um, all that black underneath um, is now looking very, very red. So I'm going to want to come in here and deepen that up quite a bit, I think. It's fun, though, I can tell you that. <laughs> I 
think some of you will really, really enjoy working on this drafting film. It takes some getting used to, some experimentation, you know, but um, it's really cool. All right, let's see if we can make some lighter marks with the um, eraser and the slice tool again. I'm gonna try that again. I like how the color is getting richer. Now that I can, whoops, now that I can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, um, so the eraser, If I wanted to take a little bit of color off the top of the nose, I just use my eraser. And pull that color right off. Now you get a, um, a heavier, you know, a thicker line that comes off with the eraser, obviously, more than the um, slice tool, but that's okay. So like if you wanted to add some lighter highlights right here, we can do that with the eraser. See a kitty's a kitty's hairs would be going so I don't know if you guys could see this or not. Although you're we're pretty zoomed in, so you probably can. You see all that little, all those little hair textures? <laughs> they look nice, really nice. Okay, um, I want to work on the eyes a little bit because there's something that's just not right here. I think this needs to be dark. might have put something in there already. I did. That's not going to be as dark as I would like. Okay, and then we need to put a little bit of color under here. I want it even darker under there. I'm not sure. Might have to do black. I'm going to shove that up just a bit. Okay. 
Let's do some So it, it definitely gets darker um, when you have a lot of black under your page. I actually like, I really like the brightness there too. So you're going to get two completely looks depending on um, what you're doing. All right, what else do I want to do? Actually, to be honest, I'm kind of feeling like I want to put this back in here. And um, darken things up with a dark, deep. Is Indian red too bright? I think it is. I think I need something even darker and richer. Should we do Caput Mortem Violet? Hmm, I don't know. The Indian red looks really pink to me, and I thought that it would be darker. So, I think I'm going to try Caput Mortem Violet. One of my favorite colors in the polys. Let's just see what that does. So if you are a fine detail person, I think you will really, really, really like this paper. Um, for me, it's the little teeny tiny details that really make a page fun for me. And I don't on this drafting film, it's not like it takes, you get to doing the details a lot faster than, um, than you would on regular paper. Now I did discover that you actually can, um, you actually can do a little bit of blending on this. Um, not, I wouldn't say in huge areas, like not blending like if you're trying to blend a whole um, face. But um, I will pull out my blender pencil and show you guys that you can still do some blending. I tried doing a face and I will show you guys what I did there. Um, she, it's not bad and maybe it's just that I need to do some more work on it. Um, so I shouldn't I should probably not give up yet on it, <laughs> but it was definitely not um, as easy to do as um, you know, like on a regular piece of paper.
so that's interesting. Um, not, it's not really interesting, but I'm looking at this when the pa when the paper's here, and I'm going, why is that there? That's bugging me. I don't like it. <laughs> it sticks out too far. It looks totally normal on on the page, but not when I'm trying to do it um, without. So I think I'm going to erase it. Watch this. It's like magic. <laughs> just it just goes away. Just it's so cool. Like <laughs> done. Love it. Okay, so I probably um, you know got excited to show you stuff and moved into doing um, the slice tool a little bit early in some of these areas, I think because I feel like they still need some dark in here. But it looks like it's covering okay where the slice tool was, so that's good. And I think this here needs to be defined a little bit better. This is, I'm having fun. This is fun. You guys are going to like this, using this. Okay. Um, just do, do, I think I want a little bit more black. And what happens if I bring in some white? Not a whole lot, but I think if I put it on the back, it would show better. But poly white is a little bit um, translucent. So maybe I try a different white. Mm, I could try my Prisma white, I suppose. But I don't know how good, how much it's gonna do. Not a whole lot. <laughs> Not a whole lot, but that's because I put all that gray down, which maybe, eh, maybe wouldn't, wasn't the right choice. Um, because his face isn't quite as bright white as I would have liked it to be. You know, his, this little muzzle part. see how my um, blender works. So this is my Prismacolor blender. And I just want to see. Yeah, see it'll soften and blend. That softened that out real nice. Nicely. Yep. <sighs> All right. I'm liking the addition of the um, Caput Mortem Violet very much.
All right, now, if I wanted to, I could probably, yep, just take some of that out. Yep. Alrighty. Um, Now you can, as I said, you can work on the back um, of a piece as well. So um, um, if you if you felt like you wanted to add some some depth in an area that you um, have uh, already done a lot of layers on, let's just let's just do that because show you. You can add color to the back of the piece. So I'm going to add some black. I'm going to do it just on one side so you can see the difference. And I'm going to feather it out. You want to you want to remember that everything that you do on the back is going to be seen on the front as well. So you don't want to just scribble on the back. And so now you can see how I've got so much more depth right there than I do on that ear right there. So, um, yeah, the possibilities of what can be done on this are so cool. But you could also do it on the front too, so. I wanted even just a little bit more. I could do just a little bit more on the front. Now don't now remember that if you put color on the back, when you go to use your slice tool, <laughs> I didn't think about that. Um, when you go to use your slice tool, it's going to show the color that you put on underneath. So, for example, let's see what happens if I want to get these whiskers to, gosh darn, yeah, I need to order a new blade. So those little um, whisker hairs <clears throat> are not gonna be as bright since I added the black on the back. I'm gonna kinda show black. trying to get as much information in here as I can. <laughs> as I can. Um, yeah, it was really zoomed in, so let's just zoom out a little bit more. Okay, so that is pretty much the cat face. I will probably work on it some more, um, but you can see how cool that is and that came from using Carolina's coloring page as, as our starting point. And um, I think I am gonna work on the rest of this. I think I will um, probably finish up the cat off camera because otherwise we're just gonna, this will be a humongously long um, video. But I wanted to just be able to show you what can be done with the drafting film in conjunction with colored, um, with coloring pages, coloring books and coloring pages. And then I'll probably come back after I've done the body and um, on another video, we'll work on some branches and, and some flowers and stuff just for fun. And, and I think that that's what we'll do. So there we are. So um, I hope you discovered something new that you um, will enjoy and have a lot of fun with. Um, there is a link um, in the description box below to my Amazon storefront where um, this paper is listed. If you would like to support me in that way, if you decide that you do want to try some drafting film, you can get it from there. Um, 
it doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just um, it's just a way for me to keep going with my channel and um, yeah. So I'm really I'm kind of like excited and giddy about how this is turning out and excited about continuing on. So we will um, we will do that on the next video. We'll work on it some more and. So until I see you guys again, thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Happy coloring. Happy arting. And I'll see you later. Bye.